Hello, Seattle. Hello. Hello. Hello, world. Hello, Cleveland. Hello, Cleveland. Well, hello. Wholly independent and completely untethered since 2009, this is the Marty Reamer Show podcast. Reamer. 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 From the epicenter, Seattle, USA. Where's Shai? From their west side basement, lodged between the mold and the bad memories. Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Here are your hosts, Marty Reamer and somebody else. Eh, hey, forget about the somebody else. Not important. It's Marty Reamer. Oh, there's the somebody what? else. Too early. Uh, please uh, join us in uh, welcoming our regular co-host. <laughs> he came in and then he left. Uh, Michael Susser, there he is, Michael Susser. Woo! Cover story in the weekly next week yeah. about his turning 30. And Thank what you. that feels like. Thank you. Why is she laughing? Or yeah. she's laughing her ass off. It is uh, the 18th day of July. This is episode number 444. Very special. 444 of the uh, Marty Reamer Show podcast. 444, by the way, I didn't. Uh, I don't expect any of you to know this because you're all heathens. But it is, uh, that is the, the number of the angel, the angel's number. Which is weird because that means they just live two blocks down from Satan because he's at 666. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> the angels are at four four four. I don't know. I, I guess uh, that means God is at one one one. You're he. That's the good end of the street. Mm-hmm. The railroad tracks run right through five five five. Of course, that's what distinguishes. Okay, whatever. And, and you're a reverend now. If people didn't I hear am, last week's show, you're an ordained minister now. I married my first couple. Uh, I believe they're split up now. <laughs> uh, they got married last week, mm-hmm. and uh, now the, it ended. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, bad judgment on their part on <laughs> many levels. No, it's beautiful. I was very anxious uh, oh. uh, performing that ceremony. It was at a park uh, out in Juanita mm-hmm. on the shores of Lake Washington on the hottest freaking day of the year, yeah. outdoors in the glaring sunshine. Mm-hmm. My, you know, I was so slathered up in <laughs> sunscreen yeah. and robes. Oh, my God. Robes, lots of robes. Mm-hmm. You could have worn like a Pope hat or something to have uh, deflected the sun. Worn a Pope hat. <laughs> It is uh, Bite of Seattle week this week, which differs from the Folk Life Festival and Bumbershoot in exactly zero ways. <laughs> you drop me in the Bite of Seattle in the midst of it, and I'm like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Folk Life, Bumbershoot, it's all the same. But you know who's playing the Bite of Seattle tonight, Friday night at 7 p.m.? One of my favorite bands out of Portland, Moody Little Sister. And I swear to you, I do not want to go to the Bite of Seattle, but if there's no other way to see Moody Little Sister, mm-hmm. I will... Leave West Seattle. By God, there's <laughs> got to be another way to see hmm. Moody Little Sister. You could fly your drone over it with a camera, Marty. I could. I could see him that way. <laughs> or I could just say hello to them because they're here right yes, now. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, look at them. God, they're all bright-faced yep. and chipper and they are. all that. She hasn't stopped laughing since I said you were 30 years old. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> uh, there's nothing funny about that, but yeah. Uh, Naomi and Rob, welcome back. I I have to tell you guys, big uh, props to you guys. Our show with you on it, uh, more downloads than any other show. Nice. A- and, uh, I mean, that was us, not you. But <laughs> n- nonetheless, you guys rode on our coattails all right. to, <laughs> to all of that uh, glory. They say that's what you got to do. Any way like, to get there. Yeah. You, got, <laughs> you guys are number one until Amanda Knox shows up on, yep. uh, on this program. Uh, yep. We're working her. Sarah Liberator, who's been on, you know in the background here many Love times, Sarah. And, and Sarah booked yeah. you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She met Amanda Knox at a party, nice. and they bonded. <laughs> they actually sh- pictures of her were like being yep. Facebooked and yep. and texted to me, going, "Look who I'm with," and I'm like, "Who is that?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, and so she asked her about being on the show, and she said, "Oh yeah, I know Marty," mm-hmm. which you know. She doesn't. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so Sarah thought she had it going on. And then Amanda gave her her email address. Mm-hmm. So Amanda has been pining after, uh, or no, uh, Sarah <laughs> has been pining after Amanda now, bombarding her with emails ever since and no response. Oh. So that friendship does not appear to be flourishing. I think part of the problem may be that Amanda probably did a Google search on Marty Reamer show and Amanda Knox and found out 
This isn't a safe environment. No, no. We have this mocked is... her mercilessly since she did a cartwheel in Italy I, after you she should have seen me. <laughs> you should have seen me on my laptop when Sarah Liberator said that Amanda Knox might be coming on the show. Mm-hmm. I went through searching going, delete, delete that show. <laughs> right. And I don't want her to hear what we said. I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't pretty. No, would you like me to summarize, Marty? You said she should go back because it was the only time she'd ever have fame again in her entire life. I think I summarized that she well. She should go back <laughs> and surprise everyone by yeah. standing drop. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, you're welcome here, Amanda. And oh, our promise to you is that we will not talk about the incident. Mm-hmm. Alleged. Le- alleged. <laughs> alleged. It's depending on mm-hmm. which country you're in. <laughs> uh, yep. At all. We'll yep. talk about other things. We'll talk about kombucha. That's yep. all we talk about anymore on True. this program is kombucha. Yeah. We just happened to touch on this uh, fermented uh, goat's curd or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right before we signed on, Michael Mm -hmm. was trying Mm -hmm. to be disparaging of my new hobby uh, hobby that is brewing the kombucha, the Mm -hmm. booch. Mm -hmm. And and he thought, (laughs) like a schoolyard bully, he'd get everyone in the room to start laughing at me. Right. Instead, Naomi sided with yeah. me because yeah. she brews the booch. Yeah. I do. Yeah. She has a scoby. I have oh four of them. Four scobies. Four scobies. God, maybe that's a few too many. Wow. Yeah, it's like growing little brains in jars. It's fun. Oh, it does see. kind of feel that way. <laughs> yeah. Like they, because they keep yeah. getting bigger and they yeah. look like an organ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they do. And it's like jellyfish. Kind and they of. grow an alien baby, right? Yeah. And they grow a baby. Yeah. 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 Every yeah. booch grows. Every yeah. scoby grows a little baby scoby. But I mean, what's weird about that story is not only did she say, "Oh, me too," but she ran to her car where her kombucha was on ice, <laughs> and then she brought it into the studio. I mean, that's a little weird. I mean, that I can. Like fantastic. lemonade, I'm not running around town <laughs> proselytizing about. Where's my homemade lemonade? You guys are freaks. Mm. That is my opinion. But you haven't tried this. Yes. Yet, so, oh, I'm um, going to be shamed by your uh, boot. I, I, I get nervous and so I get anxious and I want to try it and then I, I shut down the brewing process too soon, and then all I have is really sugary tea. Oh yeah. That's what happened with yeah. me in my second batch. I've got my third batch brewing up there. You um, can taste it while it's still brewing. I, I could. Like, they say, you know, you're supposed to stick a stick straw in there. Straw in the, uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no, I was too excited. It was like perfect temperature up there. Yeah. This you weather's know, been perfect. Yeah. It's been, <laughs> I just put it up in the upstairs room where it gets so scorching hot because it's the bedroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh <dear. laughs> yes. that, That's going to make your kombucha really attractive to if other people. If you need yeast grown, you come to me. <laughs> Oh, Brought it down. Amanda's never okay. gonna come. And now Amanda's not gonna come now. <laughs> yeah. Good oh. lord, it's an inappropriate show. Yeah. Anyhow. So you know, I you're laughing a lot, but you haven't tried my no. strawberry mint infusion. So what? Um, yeah. So what Flavor? do you do? You do something fancy with it after you done brew so it. So it's brew. called the second brew or yeah, the yeah. second fermentation. Because I like the bubbles. Um, so, and I like things, I like to trick my own mind to make myself think I'm eating something amazing when it's healthy. Uh-huh, yeah, And I'm, I'm Italian, so I want things to taste good when right. I eat them. It's right. kind of like the only point of eating is the enjoyment of it. To think Amanda could have killed you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah! Uh-huh. Oh, yeah! That's the way we do it on this. Awesome. So I'm always trying we'll to find We'll delete this ways. show, by the way, <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to find ways to make healthy stuff that tastes good, that I think... This can't possibly be healthy because it tastes so amazing. So I went after kombucha that way because the first time I ever saw kombucha, I was a teenager cleaning this old weird guy's house and he had this giant, giant one oh, on yeah. the counter. Yeah, that's unnerving when and, you see that. And he was walking around like, this is my live forever. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is uh, so yeah, that's, gross. That's oddly <laughs> enough the way Aaron is going to be talking about me in a few years. She goes, first time I saw kombucha was in this weird old guy's house. Yeah. And he just kept running around going, this might be a little forever. <laughs> That's going to be me in that story. Yes. And some people don't, you know, they don't flavor it or anything. But the second brew, after you get all the probiotic and it does its little cook and everything, yeah. and grows its baby. I put it in the refrigerator with fresh fruit 
I so this one was fresh strawberries from the market. Yeah. And then mint leaves from our garden. Oh uh, wow. Three yeah, you days, do it right. It infused in there and then I bottle it and let it sit out for like a day and a half to like wow. start eating the sugars and that's what causes all the little fuzzy bubbles. Yeah. So they told me or the book I was reading said just drop it's the German approach. In fact I think it actually oh. is called this. They just say <laughs> drop one raisin in the the kombucha brew and the sugars from the raisin will create that fermentation. But it also blows <laughs> Bloats the raisin up. Now you've got a yellowish liquid in a mason jar with a big bloated brown thing floating in there. And I'm telling you, no one will drink your kombucha. No, you, you don't have to worry about someone stealing the kombucha. First time I uh, heard about kombucha was this old DJ. And he had this brown thing floating in. <laughs> so that was really good for it. I'm excited to try yours and then be forever humbled. Yeah. In my brewing uh, process. But I have the healthiest SCOBY in town. I'm, I don't even care about the booch. I want to now just distribute Just my... listen to yourself. You can. You can. I, I know. People get excited about Obviously. that. Obviously. I bought one at a garage sale that I was really excited about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there you go. My kombucha there is already a higher grade. I did not go. I, the garage sale one didn't work. That, that one didn't work. Oh, that it didn't work. Really a surprise. There was yeah, a reason like, they were getting rid of it. There was, the reason I went to this What was that sale? discussion like at, 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 in the family that was having the garage sale? Are we going to get rid of the booch? What's that big uh, blob thing? Oh, yeah, I just saw it at the garage sale. <laughs> I mean, who, my... who would ever buy that? I mean, you're one in a million that you show up. A, and... How much did a booch at a garage really. sale cost? It was two dollars. <laughs> two dollars. My friend just paid twenty three dollars for her her startup yeah. scoby. So yeah. it was like two bucks. I was like, oh, oh well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try that. Yeah. It might have a different yeah. flavor, a different personality. And now when you say it didn't work, you just plopped it in the <laughs> in the brew and it just sat there and did nothing? Two weeks later, I checked on it and it was going... Brr, and oh, no, oh. no little white, delicious little skin on yeah. it or anything. Yeah. Did you get mold out of it? Uh, no, nope, I haven't, <laughs> okay, yeah. haven't molded anything. Yeah, That's always the big fear is that once the mold invades... Uh -huh. Then you're done for. You got to get rid of the scope. You got to sell it at a garage sale yeah, I know, to I know. someone from Portland. <laughs> that's uh, I'm just that's my that's my booch brewing tip for today. I think kombucha is kind of hard to mess up. Uh -huh, that's what they say. So yeah. I think that's what's cool about it oh, is. Yeah. What, at four dollars a bottle when you go buy it, you yeah. can make a, a gallon jar for like a dollar and a half or something per drink. Yeah. You know what else they say that about? Ebola is hard to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You, you just can't Good go point. wrong. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and every Ebola makes a baby Ebola <laughs> and then kills it. <laughs> Oh, all right. Wow. Okay. Wow. I know okay, so I don't know when we're going to drink. Uh, I you, mean, now we can. We could. We uh, could well, I could, I'm, I could um, open it and you could hear the fizz. Look, and you have the right bottles, too. Yep. Isn't yep. I put it in mine in old jam jars. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it feeds the with a big brown thing. Float. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, well, I mentioned that uh, that Moody Little Sister is going to be playing. Well, they'll be playing this show here, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the Bite of Seattle. It, did I get it right tonight? Seven o'clock tonight. Tonight, yeah. seven o'clock. Fisher Green Stage. Uh, that's going to be very popular. What a beautiful night to be out, especially yeah. since uh, whenever we have a big outdoor festival, it rains, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to. There's some rain in the forecast for the rest of the weekend, but tonight, sweet. Nice, awesome. perfect. <laughs> um, but you uh, at the Bite of Seattle will be competing with another major event, or perhaps enhancing it. Uh, just around the corner at Key Arena, it's the it's the annual uh, international competition. The international hmm. reminds me of that character. Well, you were the we continental. Were, the continental. Yes, yes. Uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> But this is a, uh, uh, it's drawing 18,000 fans to Key Arena. They are competing in an online role-playing game called Dota 2. Huh. I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. For a portion of the $10 million prize purse. People come from all around the world to compete in this annual event. $10 million prize. It's covered live, carried live on ESPN3. Wow. Is it my imagination, but the higher the number connected with ESPN, the yep. less athletic the people exactly. on the exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be on ESPN 16 one yeah, day. It's right after bowling. <laughs> yes. That, and then there's the spelling bee, which is on 17. Yeah, yeah that's true. ESPN 17. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, so that's going on uh, right there on the Seattle Those Center Those are all grounds. the moody little sister fans who are going to be in there, the, the game playing role playing. No, oh, no, you're not. Yeah. No, not okay, really. Good. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think those are. We're separate. all about the unplug. So yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm Beautiful. It. Um, one of the teams that's competing, uh, the team that has finished second the last two years, is from the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. 
the Ukraine. Um, and obviously they'd be excused for not finishing second this year uh, because they've got other things on their mind. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, man, that was, uh, that was a shocker uh, when another Malaysian airliner goes down. I, yep. I don't know who at CNN has sold their soul to the devil and said, you know, please, that's all we've got at CNN mm-hmm. is when a jetliner goes down. Um, two things. One is terrible tragedy, um, especially for the Netherlands. You know, there were it was flying from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. So there were a lot of folks, a lot of Dutch folk. In fact, on a percentage basis, this stunned me. Uh, more people uh, affected by this disaster in the Netherlands than Americans were affected by 9-11. Wow. Whoa. On a percentage basis. Yikes. So you can that's the kind of impact yep. it's having. Um and then the second thing, on a, on a, I know it's probably too soon to say on a lighter note, mm. um, but MSNBC, all the 24-hour news networks, I know when something like this happens, they are in an orgasmic state. They're like, oh, yeah. can you believe it? This and Gaza together? Mm-hmm. Although this <laughs> is better than Gaza, because Gaza would actually require them to get in harm's way, and that they yeah. would prefer not. They would prefer to yeah. tweet from a safe distance. <laughs> But they, <laughs> despite the, their their you know, exuberance about a disaster and about how they can really just roll around in it, they need to vet their sources. Uh, yesterday, Michael sent this to me. Um, it's unbelievable. Because you have to understand, before someone gets on the air at MSNBC, there are numerous producers that are talking to them. This guy apparently played himself off as a sergeant who was stationed at the American embassy in Ukraine and saw the plane being shot down. Mm-hmm. So they hustle him, his sergeant blah, blah. I don't know what his name yeah. is. Sergeant York. And they <laughs> hustle him to the air. And this hapless, have you guys heard this? No. This hapless, you guys, are you guys, oh, you guys have your headphones on. See, you, you told them they didn't need the headphones <laughs> yeah. for any reason. They need the headphones to be able to hear this. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, so this hapless reporter introduces him, asks him a question. Does Howard Stern still have that, that challenge out there to his listeners? That was back when he was on terrestrial radio. He would challenge his listeners that if you can ever get my name woven into some mainstream broadcast, yep. he will, I don't know, give you a shout out on his show right, or right. something like that. <clears throat> uh, so just listen here. This Phone with us. Sergeant, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Please tell us what, what you saw there on the ground in Ukraine. Well, I was looking out the window and I saw a projectile flying through the sky and it would appear that the plane was shot down by a blast of wind from Howard Stern's ass. So it would appear that the plane was shot down. Can you tell us anything more from your military training of of what sort of missile system uh, that may have been coming from? Well, you're a dumbass, aren't you? I'm sorry, sir. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with all the latest next. Yeah, maybe you should come back oh. in like 10 years. Oh. Take a quick break. That's we'll be so back in 10 painful. years. Uh, boy, doesn't that highlight so much about the news? She's just yeah. reading questions off a teleprompter. Has no idea what he's saying. Yep. It's like, I just get, need to get to the next line. Yep. Ask him a follow-up question. Oh, my God. No matter what. It's like going through a drive through <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, going through a drive-thru is like like having sexual relations with someone <laughs> compared to that cold interaction. I uh wow. Yeah, it's just the whole thing. He's an ass and she's oh, he's an idiot a total and jackass. they're not doing their job, which is that nobody, you know, Ugh. Or that was his lifetime goal, and he worked so hard yeah, at knowing how to say that. all the right Maybe. things to get to that Because he did say some right things. I, I mean, leading up to that, He'd he must have somehow that. convinced you know he them, and he had to stick. And then he has to know exactly when he fi- He can't be too yeah. premature. He can't blow his cover. Right. You know, one second early. And then he didn't know he was on live. He It could have been a recorded right. interview that will air again in a few minutes. Yep. So I got to say, not nearly as clever as the 
Asiana Airlines, mm -hmm. the that little gag where they somehow managed to get the names of the crew onto the teleprompter for the reporter down in San Francisco, who then said, you know, we too low, mm -hmm. holy <laughs> fook, yeah. bang ding ow. You're missing one. <laughs> have you? I, don't I am that. missing one. <laughs> Did, uh, have you not heard that one? No. Oh, my God. Okay, well. I, We've only played it 900 <laughs> times on the show. Seriously. So Let me see. The I, fact that Marty doesn't I don't know, know if I can work the sad. fart machine this fast. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I think I can dig that one up for you. Hold on oh, here. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there. Sh Let's see. Oh, yeah. There we go. Done. <laughs> Adding files. Mm -hmm. Hold on. This is, I mean, really, on a, on a gag basis, this one is classic. They don't get any better than this. Let's see here. Get her. We have new information now. Also on the plane crash, KTVU has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong, We Too Low, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ao. The NTSB has confirmed these are the names of the pilots on board flight 214. <laughs> it's something <laughs> Wong. Yeah, I got that one wrong. Sorry. Awesome. Okay, that. Fantastic. There will never be anything no. more oh, clever. Yeah. They should just shut her down. Shut yeah, down the pretty, gags. Pretty great. I mean, with, you know, unemployment rates the way there, somebody doesn't want that job anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Was, uh, like, we're going out with a bang today. Like, now, this woman, I can out. cut her some slack. She really is just reading mm -hmm. a bunch of names. And she does say it in such a way that unless you're in on the gag, <laughs> you you might not catch it. Mm -hmm. You might think, oh, yeah, of course, those sound like Asian-sounding names. Something wrong. <laughs> yeah, something yeah, wrong. Yeah. Holy fook. Holy I mean, that's fook. just <laughs> sad. <laughs> did anyone did, did it was an intern right at the NTSB an intern at the NTSB who Rolled by the way there. lost his internship oh, yes yeah. and you wonder yeah. was that a good career move on his part? well he did, could go work for the onion or something yeah, now and be yeah. Kick, you know pretty great resume yeah, yeah how do you get an internship at the NTSB what kind of a career path are you on and then yes you could you could now be a you know writer for Conan, mm -hmm. right? You might have heroic status, but as clearly well. <laughs> you've built up a trajectory in the NTSB direction <laughs> that uh, doesn't easily parlay into you know a gig right. over it. Answer to Craigslist ad or whatever. It's not that hard. <laughs> Just you get on the air. <laughs> what was? Uh, oh my gosh! I've had some awkward conversations, very tense conversations with bosses, but I can only imagine when oh. the director of the NTSB brought that kid in Hold. and goes. Holy fuck, are you in trouble? <laughs> oh, that's I not my think, name, sir. Uh -huh. I don't think there was a something wrong is my yeah, name. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure the guy was out the door, right? I mean, no. Well, yeah, but someone around. had to fire and someone well, had to you don't sit have to wait around for that Marty. and have a You'll conversation. Learn. You can leave without. No, trust me. I've okay. done things where I thought, okay, now I'm pretty much. You're clear. Clear, but then they have to bring you in and tell you, <laughs> remind you. By the way, mm, and okay. we need that fart machine back. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying my little fart machine home. Mm -hmm. They didn't get the fart machine for another year and a half. I'll have you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Look at how I'm working with the new one. It's all beautiful. <clears throat> I'm um, glad that uh, Moody Little Sister is here today and not uh, tomorrow and beyond. In fact, are you getting out of town right away? Yeah. Uh, you are? Do, because Carmageddon. Carmageddon, <laughs> yeah. Starting tonight at 9 p.m. and all the way through next week, westbound I-90 will be closed in to one lane. I, that, yeah. <gasps> one lane. Squeeze down to one lane down at Bellevue uh, Way. If this is the state's way to get me to pay a toll on 520, I will not do it. <laughs> I don't leave my house, people. You can go ahead and squeeze I-90 all the way down. <laughs> yeah. uh, 85,000 cars, 9,000 bus riders, 13 bus routes are impacted. That's surprising to me, actually. When I read that, I thought I-90 is like a huge arterial in the city, and it only carries 13 buses? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's because the east side buses. Buses. <laughs> are you kidding? You're disgusting. Yeah. That's going to be uh, cluster F. That's going to be bad. 
Thank the, you. Thank you for yeah. cleaning it See, up. See, I didn't say clusterfuck. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I think what is a little smart about them blasting these headlines, and it has been front page news that if you're going anywhere in the next week, don't do it. Uh-huh. They probably reduce traffic hugely. Yes. It, uh, every time, like down in L.A., when they, uh, when they projected Carmageddon a few years back, mm-hmm. it wasn't nearly as bad as yeah. everyone had anticipated because you scared the bejesus out of yeah. people. And there's like, I don't want anything to do with my yeah. car. Um, but you know, eventually that's going to wear off and <laughs> people are going to go, Oh, they always right. predict this. And it's never as bad. And then right. it's going to be horrifying. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Amazon this week announced a, a new subscription service where for nine ninety nine a month, you can download and read as many books as you can muster, read a page in each one and then put them <laughs> in the shredder. It doesn't matter. You paid to huh. do that. Um, <laughs> At first, you think this is a novel idea. Like uh, you're going, "Wow, I can read as much," and then you go, "Oh, that's a library." <laughs> I see. There's that's that. kind of how the library works. Yeah. For zero a month. Um, Gorging on words. That's great. But there are there is this this segment of society. Is anyone in this room part of it that really looks disparagingly on the library? Like, like if you tell someone you got a book at the library, they're like, mm-hmm. what century are you living in? <laughs> and the library is the coolest freaking service. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now with it, with it all online, I mean, I understand that the idea, the old concept of wandering into a library and flipping through the shelves going... Oh, wow. Okay, there's 85 Judy Bloom books here. <laughs> but the one, the one I want isn't here. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's checked out. <laughs> yeah, that's frustrating. Mm-hmm. But that's not the way it is anymore. Now it's all online. I just, like, dream up something I want to read, <laughs> submit. It comes to my life. I mean, they might as well just deliver it right to my door. <laughs> they might as well. And <laughs> read it for me. That. They might as well just read it to me. Yeah, yeah. What else are librarians going to do anyway? Yeah. They're just sitting around. You should read your own book. Unbelievable. And, you know, for your music collection, I mean, I know as musicians, you don't want to hear this, but but you just reserve every CD you've ever been interested in. You come to, you download it to Marty. Uh, I don't want to tell you how it, it works. Burns but, CDs. Yes, yeah. it does. Well, it just downloads them immediately. Yeah, it doesn't burn them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, there's, I'm sure, a huge segment of society who says, you know, once I pay nine ninety nine a month, now it's legit. Now I'm okay to borrow other people's Mm -hmm. (laughs) refuse or whatever. (laughs) Okay. Anyone here inclined to take part in this service? Does does anyone here read? (laughs) (laughs) It's gotten very quiet. (laughs) I like paper. I like paper too. Mm. Touching. That's right. I should point out this is only their digital downloads. Yeah. Yeah, The Kindle Kindle stuff you get for nine ninety nine a month. Um, Ron Howard has announced that he plans to make a film about the Beatles. Oh, my God. Really? (laughs) At this point, I'm just stunned that there is still content out there that you can dig up. But wait, his film will cover the years between Hamburg and their last concert at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. In other words, it'll be like every other (laughs) Beatles documentary ever made. He's great at picking the most just cliche and generic crap right he did the apollo 13 what's he gonna go to next he's got to do the kennedy assassin i like ron howard me too but i i mean do think this topic has been done yeah um unless you you reveal that john lennon was a woman Mm -hmm. uh, at this point (laughs) i think yeah i don't know if you're gonna you know really get me to dig into this documentary they they in hamburg those years they were kind of cranked up on something so that would be interesting if they showed them all on uh whatever speed or whatever they started hmm. out on all okay. sweaty and they, I mean, they have and to they, yeah that's the part of the pr push well, okay what what did you uncover that hasn't been uncovered before so that when we do yeah. the promo for this you know ron howard found that the Beatles right. killed eight people before their hamburg show one night that's good. Um, uh, you know, the Jimi Hendrix biop, whatever they just released to great acclaim, whatever, was trash because they literally had him in some abusive relationship or smacking somebody and it didn't really happen because uh, our local Charles Cross or whoever the journalist here is who covers them was just like, this is just outrageous. Oh, yeah. They so they have, to, they have to jack it up in order. But it's horrible. I mean, that yeah. is horrible that they literally add stuff because people leave that movie thinking that, you know, he was smacking somebody around. 
If I were a college professor and I assigned my class, do a documentary on the Beatles between Hamburg and Candlestick Park, they'd drop the class. They'd say, okay, (laughs) this is stupid. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or they would just, you know, copy one that's already been one of the 1800 (laughs) that's been done. Yeah. And I'll say. uh, Why do you hate the Beatles? (laughs) Why do you hate the Beatles? We've had this conversation. It's time to move on. It's not. They're the greatest band ever. Should we have this conversation? Let's not. Who's your favorite Beatle, Marty? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) He does. He ain't so. I think the Beatles contributed a great deal. It's time now to realize that it's 60 years ago. I, I do. I always think about, like, when I was a teenager, if people had been raving about something that happened 60 years previously, I'd go, what the fuck? I mean, when I was a teenager, 60 years before that, I believe Christopher Columbus had just landed. <laughs> and so, roughly, that's yeah. the time frame we're talking about. Yeah. And Christopher Columbus seemed like millions of, No, what would it have been? Let me see. When I was a teenager... 1930 it was back like years. Benny Goodman or something oh my God. it would have been that someone saying you know <laughs> we're gonna do a documentary about Benny Goodman but but don't we're gonna do it from when he was in Hamburg mm-hmm. those were amazing years when Benny was in Hamburg Marty is not the same because Benny Goodman nobody knows who the hell that is it's not Benny, like, it's at like the time pick, are you pick, kidding me over. in 1980 yeah well. people who were our age whoa <laughs> God, that hurts they loved them some Benny Goodman. Yeah, and we're yeah. sad that he never actually made it to Hamburg. I think he crashed in, in the English Channel on his way to mm-hmm. fight the... Mm-hmm. They're more iconic than that. It's like Beethoven and then the Beatles. You can do that. Well, why are we still talking about this old man? Because, <laughs> boom, it matters. It's not Benny Goodman. It's not Cab Calloway. It's the well, Beatles, for God's sake. Excuse me sake. for not being as old as you. Yeah. And 60 years ago for you was Beethoven. Yeah. For me, it was Benny Goodman. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, nice you try. You go ahead and revel in your... Uh, nice try. First of all, just read you look Read his me. article, Fucking 50, uh, cover <laughs> story of the Seattle weekly yeah. next week it's not so funny when you find out he's 50 is <laughs> this show sucks <laughs> most listened to show ever i'll tell you that um people are just going get to the music on <laughs> please um <laughs> the best is yet to come here, I'm telling you. Uh, in an interview with The Guardian uh, yesterday, Edward Snowden, you know, who's a uh, hold up in, uh, in Moscow um, trying to avoid prosecution by the authorities over here, claimed that within the NSA, a culture exists. This is like, this is horrifying. This is like the, the worst thing you could possibly imagine is being done with the data that's being <laughs> collected illegally. Uh, a culture existed that allowed staffers to pick up nude photographs of people in sexually compromising situations and laugh at them. They would pass them around internally at the NSA and giggle. Uh, and I'm like, all right, okay. I thought they were using that information to disparage like reporters and, right. and trash reputations, but no, they were just no. <laughs> being teen boys about it all. Yeah. All right. I don't know if that makes it better or worse oh, it's that worse. they were spying on us. Oh, well, it doesn't matter, but I mean, even if they came up on a nugget like they say they're looking for, here's Osama Bin Laden naked, and they're all giggling and passing around. They're not doing anything with it. Yeah. They suck. Don't put your business online. Don't put, mm. and by, by business, I mean your business. Mm. Don't put it online. Business. It, business. It, it, yeah, it <laughs> doesn't end well. It's out there. Once it's out there, once it escapes your, yeah. your device... The NSA has full rights to make fun of your junk. <laughs> there. I have ruled. I'm yeah. Antonin Scalia. I think that's their slogan, too. The NSA, we have full, full rights, rights to... To ridicule your junk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then finally, um, before we uh, get to Moody Little Sister, remember all the great inventions that I have turned you on to on this program? Uh, the peanut butter stirrer, which I wanted to invent, but then somebody sent me one and I was like, oh, this is bullshit because this is a crappy version of what I had in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you, you, you eat the natural peanut butter, it's annoying when it separates and, and when you try to stir it, the oil swills out over the side and then when you get to the bottom of the jar, it's like this rock hard, never seen oil concoction. Yeah. And like, that's, so peanut butter stirrer, mm-hmm. got to get one. Mm-hmm. 
hexagonal water. That's the stuff that gives you everlasting life. You yeah. just put it in this blender with a magnet and you live forever. Uh, that was me. Com, I, on the water I got that one. Um, <laughs> that I discovered at my kid's uh, science night at her school. There yeah. was a very attractive woman who was 155 yep. sitting there demonstrating it. Just like, drinking water. Yeah, Amazing. That's all she was. She said, what is all this about? <laughs> said, I'd, like to, I'd like to know. Uh-huh. Um, Kombucha, yeah. There's the, the drone, I say, within a few years. I, I said this about a year ago. I said, within a few years, everyone will own a drone. Mm-hmm. Little did I know. I was a little off. Uh, basically, uh, Amazon will own all the drones mm-hmm. well, and fly yeah. them everywhere to deliver your products. But drones are going to be a big thing. Yep. <laughs> and now I have to give my father credit for this one. He uh, uncovered an amazing invention, uh, which I think is going to be right up your alley. If you're, if you're a kombucha brewer, mm. you're going to like this. Uh, how do you do your laundry? What do you what do you use? Do you go down to the river? Uh, rock? <laughs> Washboard. Yeah. Washboard and some rocks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this device is called the Pure Wash Professional Grade Ionic Laundry Purifier. Okay, it's got a cumbersome name, wow. but stick with me. Don't don't tune out quite yet. Okay. Moody Little Sister still coming up. <laughs> the most popular band we've ever had on yep. the show. <laughs> Straight from their promotional materials. Imagine being able to get dazzling fresh laundry laundry without detergents, fabric softener, or even hot water. You can with Pure Wash. Hold on. (laughs) The Pure Wash laundry purifier uses the same technology previously available only to hospitals, hotels, and commercial laundromats for over a decade. Only the Pure Wash system can produce sparkling clean laundry without any chemicals or additives using only cold water and your existing washing machine. Boom! I'm done. Wow. That's, um, I'm impressed. <laughs> so my dad bought this thing, and oh, I was at, I was at their house. I was at, yeah. Off oh. that pitch, who wouldn't? I mean, yeah, yeah. I should be collecting your money right now. Yeah. yeah. You should be taking it in. Totally. I my I went to my parents' house yesterday. And my dad's been talking about this nonstop for the last three weeks, and I uh, and he goes, "You into the laundry room? Take a look at that." They don't even follow me. They just like make yeah. me go in there by myself and stare at oh. it, like I'm looking into the eyes of God. Mm-hmm. It is a it is a box about the size, a little bigger than a shoe box, okay. that you mount to the wall. They give you a template. They give you a template so it's easy to mount. Of course. Mount to the wall. It's got an, a hose inlet, a hose outlet, and then a plug that plugs into the wall, like a little electric plug. Okay. So you take the hose off the back of your washer, the inlet hose, the supply hose, and you plug it into the, what's it called? The pure wash this system? This is a DIY show now. Hold on. All right. You plug it into the, the inlet on the pure wash system. Then you take another hose and you take it from the outlet of the pure wash system. And you, So it's basically you just insert this into the line before the water gets to your uh, laundry system. And what this machine does is it oxidizes the water. Now you think, well, what does that mean? Notice how like a lot of cleaning products are called OxyClean and mm-hmm. Oxy this and Oxy... Cotton. Only, Oxycontin, I like that one. Oxycontin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that clean, yeah. that, that cleans you of all obligations in life. Uh, isn't there some Brain pimple cell. medication called Oxy sure Zit? Uh, I don't know. But anything, everything is Oxy <laughs> yep. because Oxy means clean. Because, and not to get too technical about this, but oxygen is an atom that has two arms. It needs to bond with two things, you know, hydrogen, hydrogen, or it can bond with the other two arms of another oxygen. That's why it's always O2. Okay. So if you break oxygen apart, which means you oxidize something, you break oxygen. Now you have two oxygen uh, atoms that are floating around that are looking to bond with something. And you know what they bond with? They bond with the, your shit stained pants. (laughs) That's what they bond with. I'm telling you yeah. right now. Uh, the commercial was going well till now. But okay, go ahead. <laughs> Things went bad. Uh-huh. Did so, you did you strip down and so, shove your dirty shit stained clothes I, into the box or not? It was the one day I hadn't crapped myself, okay. and so it was really sad. Um, my dad's probably watching this, going, "Oh, you almost had it, and then you had to go yep. to your shit stained pants." Yeah, and that. Yep. Damn, we didn't. Um, so, I, I'm telling you. It's phen- it really is a technology that commercial laundries have used for eons to wash huge loads of, like, you know, hospitals. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't need to tell you. They actually are <laughs> dealing with the aforementioned. Right. 
So, and they, and it works. I mean, it, it really cleans. So I asked my mom, cause you know, my mom, my dad always comes up with the ideas and then my mom has to execute. So you can always just see her dying a little bit inside mm. going, Oh no, he picked some, some ragweed from the yard and is insisting I make it into a gourmet meal. Uh, so I asked her, I go, okay, let's pretend he's not sitting right next to you yeah. and that he'll beat you senseless if you give the wrong answer. I, uh, I said, it, does it work? And she goes, it's amazing. <laughs> cold water. She, no detergent. She doesn't use detergent at all anymore. <coughs> cold water. Now what's weird is the laundry machine, you know, the washer has a wash cycle and a rinse cycle. They're both the same. <laughs> There's no difference. It's like wash and wash. Oh, my God. Can you collect rainwater from the gutter? You probably yeah, could. That's, See, that's an important question. Yeah. That's where we're going. I bet you have a bunch of that in your car <laughs> that you've been collecting and making. Stay so the problem, the problem, this technology has existed, but they haven't been able to make it on a small scale until now, until the Pure Wash system. Wow. Dial the 800 number on your screen right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How much? Is it expensive? It should be. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. Is How it? much it would is. you pay for it, Michael? I would pay. How much would you? Wait, don't tell me yet, because I've got some knives that I'll throw in with it. <laughs> but you didn't see it in action. You have no, no idea. No, I looked at it, and it looks uh, impressive, and I trust the technology, so okay. I am sold. I, you don't have to show me how something... I mean, I just... Okay. This is a kind of like peroxide, right? Isn't that kind of what peroxide's about? Is that what peroxide's about? I don't know. What I heard is that it's the oxygen that... That just pulls the color right out of your hair? <laughs> <laughs> the the well, shit I color in your hair? that's kind of what it's turning the water into. It's kind of like a peroxide. Because some people use peroxide instead of bleach, because it's a cleaner and ah, it's better on the earth. Maybe. And, maybe huh. that's what it is. Yeah. Huh. Something like... Cause, Sweet. Yeah. Now you bring it home. See, when... <laughs> When Naomi says it, everyone goes, oh. I know, I know. Oh, when I say it, it's like, hey, old man, why don't you go and drink some of that uh, turd-filled well, water upstairs? Yeah. Well, whatever Naomi's doing is making her healthy and, you know, looking good. And so that's why we listen to her. Yeah, I know. Uh, Look at how bright her colors are, too. And she's just like, your whites will be whiter. This this show is going to be the most listened to show ever. It's going to beat the surpass the previous show, mm -hmm. which we have to take down probably because we said something about Amanda Knox. <laughs> Um, <laughs> because I have introduced you to the P P Pure Wash Laundry Purifier System Professional Grade Iconic. Oh, Ion. God. Yeah. Seriously, how much is it? I have no idea. <laughs> oh. Really? What, what, what wouldn't you pay? <laughs> what wouldn't you pay for right. that kind of a system? It I'm is sold. a green option not I'm to in. use soap. Totally. And, and no, no, uh, whatever you would get that money back by not using hot water. Oh yeah! In, in a year's time, not using hot water. Yeah. No soap. You can use soap if you'd like. I mean, if you just really for the smell. just like a little touch of. Uh, my, actually, my mom said it, everything smells so fresh. So even without <laughs> soap, uh, they're wow. claiming that it's all very fresh. So um, it's like a you know the million dollar homes tour. If you'd like to tour my parents' house oh, okay. and just walk through their laundry <laughs> yeah. room, yep, um, they will they'll have an open house on Sunday. <laughs> from one to four <laughs> while my dad's probably at the international going son of a bitch I'm going to beat those Ukrainians <laughs> okay. Okay. okay all right let's bring it down here I know we got a little excited there about <laughs> we the <laughs> yeah, we, we sure did <laughs> so, I love this kind of stuff I tell yeah, you I and, uh, you know, you just have to blame their marketing people that not everybody knows about this yet. Yeah. Yeah, th their marketing department sucks because yeah. everyone should know about the fact that there's a, a, a way to <laughs> wash only with cold water and no detergent. Just imagine what that does for the environment mm -hmm. to eliminate Huge. all laundry detergents <laughs> and all <laughs> shit stained undergarments. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a good segue, Marty. <laughs> now. <laughs> um, oh, you guys, you have been lovely. I, uh, Naomi, you've been just participating and giggling right along. I feel bad for Rob. Rob's yep. like going, I, this is, uh, I did not sign up for this. <laughs> Word of God, I'm going to kill somebody. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you do kill somebody, Rob, and you have bloodstained sheets, yeah. let me uh, <laughs> recommend the Pure Wash. Uh... Exactly. You should call it the Amanda Knox Pure Wash. Just... Oh, oh, oh there, it there it goes. There it goes. Now we're going to take show down. Opportunity. Uh, uh, okay. 
Uh, I'm seriously, when we had you guys on last, you were fantastic. Um, Thank you. We learned that you're from Alaska. Uh, he's from Oregon. You met in the middle, in other words, Oregon. Um, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> let's compromise. Let's come to Oregon. Um, so, um, and your music just kills. Let's just hear some music here and then um, play a song you're going to play tonight. And then okay. we'll we'll all eat burritos, and it'll be like a little warm up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little elephant ears. Yeah, elephant ears. Salmonella infested uh, burritos. And uh, hold on here, I'm going to fire you guys up because you can't do anything until I switch on. <laughs> all right. So there we go. This is Moody Little Sister live here on the podcast. Oh my God! Wow! That was great. God, I am so honored to have you guys on the show. That is amazing. I love, love, love. It's now my uh, one of my top five uh, whistling songs. 
<laughs> songs with whistling. <laughs> they were both whistling in the morning. <laughs> You've been laughing too much to whistle. Whistle duet, by the <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah. Both, like yeah. harmonizing yeah. your whistles. That's fantastic. I can't look at Rob and whistle at the same time though on stage. Uh. Just, you know, because it's funny. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It is, uh, it, it, what's that song called? Tumbleweed? Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Yeah. God, it's gorgeous. Thank oh you. my God, I'm in love with both of you. <laughs> Although it's funny, uh, I was going to a different camera angle here with this little camera right here and it looks like uh, the kombucha bottle is part of your uh, band oh, yeah. it's yeah. just like standing up there going hey you know, <laughs> hey i'm uh, while you guys are the backup whistlers like yeah you guys are <laughs> <laughs> and it's like yeah i don't do much in the band but i regulate our biotics <laughs> god <laughs> that's where i'm putting the pure wash system is right there right there, <laughs> right there. it's going to be part of every lineup no man that's uh that's gorgeous uh, you guys are going to make it you um <laughs> Seriously, and I and when you do, you won't remember us at all. Right. <laughs> you will. That's not true. You will. You will have gotten. You will be able to afford therapy, lots of it, and going. Just make me forget that period in our career. Why did we have to go there? It is. A, it is. We've had a hard year and a good, great year. You know, we're pushing harder than we've ever pushed, and we have. Like we've walked out of venues. We got treated very violently at a bar, and Oof. we won't mention the town. Yeah. Westport. <laughs> Westport. Yeah. Wow. Um, but you know, we've had the the gamut of and like treated violently at yeah. a bar. How did they treat? Uh, they threatened to lock me in a bathroom if we didn't turn off our shitty music and they could play their jukebox. Yeah. Like. Wow. We've had that experience, and then we've had magical like spiritual shows where we feel like we are the luckiest people on the planet and then we feel like why do we do this <laughs> why <laughs> why do i hate myself so much that i do this um so it is a it's an interesting life but uh i really appreciate anybody who helps us get anywhere because we're out there like cr- like clawing yes the dirt of course in some you are ways, you know and so what kind of cretins where is westport is that is that like a is that on the washington coast yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> now to say it fairly, there were, there was like somebody in the town that was like, by the way, like not everybody is like that, and this is you know there was this was just a bad no no experience on this that. program we paint with a very broad <laughs> brush. Yeah. Now Westport yeah. is dead dust, <laughs> dead dust. <laughs> it's amazing we haven't dumped all of Western Washington <laughs> off with Westport. It's true. Uh, oftentimes and, and Eastern. Because anytime yes, anytime Spokane <laughs> does anything, we're like, okay, there goes Eastern Washington. <laughs> we don't care about yeah. them anymore. But there is actually a fan of ours that helped us get into the bite of Seattle this week. Weekend, you know, because when we knock on the door, we go, hey, guys, uh, I have a band and I have some music you should hear. Mm-hmm. They don't care. They hear that from thousands and thousands sure. of people. Uh-huh. Okay? So when fans do it for us and they say, we know this band, you should book them. And then they do. Like, yeah. we are really thankful for all of that. And I think Friday night, 7 p.m., that's prime time. It yeah. is really good. Yeah. yeah, we're excited. That's a good slot. We have a great weekend altogether. Is it just you two or do you come? Uh, we're uh, just doing, uh, we've been touring like this. Um, Rob has more percussion that he plays with his feet so he's kind of uh-huh. my background singer he's like a monkey over singer. there he's like a one-man band monkey he totally <laughs> he's yeah. like, like in, triple yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i know if this were a union band <laughs> you would have to really compensate him for he all. does he really is the backbone and drives everything you know but and my like we were kind of writing for our dream band and for me, I have Tina Turner as my backup singer. Yeah, know? yeah. And so we wrote these songs with like this big band in mind, and then we're trying to pull it off as two people. Yeah. You know? But because um, that's working. only really the way you can tour. Because I'm, you know, raised old fashioned where you pay people what they're worth. So we would like practice with a band and weeks and weeks getting all this stuff all tightened down. And we'd have this big show and be like, hey, here's your $30. Uh, yeah. yeah. It just doesn't feel right. Right. You know, and so until we can pay our band well, we've just right. been touring as a, as a duo. And it's actually been fun. And made us creative and we've talked about that before on the show the economics of any band yeah. especially when you start getting beyond three four five players and you're like you, you have to pay all these people yeah. i don't know how that works out because it's not like the gigs are paying you anymore well, when you come and in then with... if you have a gig like we did where they they first of all they sent us 100 miles in the wrong direction <laughs> and then we ha- when we came back we ended up you know having to leave because their bar was so violent they didn't pay us they paid us half what we were get, supposed to get paid. Because you left? Because we didn't finish our set as if that would have been a good idea. We would idea. have been killed. Seriously. Um, yeah, we would have been skinned alive. <laughs> no wonder um, Kurt so- Cobain was such, like, like hated the place where he grew up. Um, yeah, but, you know, that sets us back, like, big time right. when we get half of what we're supposed to get paid or we don't, you know, we don't sell anything or, or someone booked us at a place that we never should have got booked at. Like, they didn't listen to our demo. They were just like, eh, sure, it's a band. 
And then they put us in some crazy bar, you know. Yeah. And what did they want? They wanted Skinner or something, or yeah, uh, probably Freebird. Actually, yeah. you know, it was weird. They wanted to listen to like Katy Perry and Dubstep. Dubstep. Oh. Mm-hmm. So they were like these John Deere. <laughs> <laughs> like wanting a dubstep. Nice. It's huh. really weird. It nice. was strange. You guys like the Blues Brothers. You guys should travel with the mesh that you put yeah. in front of the stage so we can throw bottles and It felt and stuff like that that night. God. Yeah. I right. feel so bad for performers in that situation. I, I don't really know tough. what a, any kind of <clears throat> jag off is thinking <laughs> when they when they do that. Because, I mean, you are out there. You are really... Yeah. I mean, I, I think... Yeah, people just don't think that that through. They just go... Oh, it's like me criticizing Elton John or, or something, you know, um, or Paul McCartney, which I'm sure I still hurt. It still hurts when Paul tunes into the podcast and goes, yeah, why doesn't exactly. Marty? Why Sir is Paul, by the way? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, yeah. And we couldn't just like in your head, you know, if you think about walking out of it, because we play some gigs that, you know, we do it for the money. But in our hearts, we're like, on oh, our last time we ever have to play this gig, we're going to like get all our friends drink a bunch of whiskey and you know make a scene and hey let's dump out of here <laughs> yeah but you can't do that you brought your whole system i play a piano yeah. he plays two guitars and a bunch of drums yeah so how do you even get out of so there? you have to pack up your shit yeah. while, while there people are uh, like yeah, were, like oh, oh yeah oh. it was so awkward like well, don't make eye contact don't uh, and then make three trips out three or four trips each out to the car with all it wasn't this victorious like Fuck you yeah yeah you know, no of course like, not it was like oh my god oh my god <laughs> yeah it was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That just makes me so. But on a on a lighter note, that's not our our experience mostly with fans. We're a positive band. We're mm-hmm. trying to give positive music to the world. We're trying to say positive things and spread love wherever we go. No, I like it better. I like your image better. It's like <laughs> Moody little sister. Halfway through every set, fuck you guys. <laughs> We're going to take 45 yeah. minutes now to pack up our, our gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We and are out of here. No, and then we are going to slam the door. <laughs> that is awesome. Not before we spit on the ground. <laughs> That's right. Um, all right. Moody Little Sister, uh, they're at uh, the Bite of Seattle uh, this weekend. Tonight. Uh, tonight. Yeah. Friday night, 7 p.m. And and then uh, any other uh, gigs up north here? Um, or... Uh, I think we're just coming back to Issaquah yeah. on the first weekend of September. Uh, we, you know, it's hard to get up here. I think I told you that last time. Like, luckily, we've had some fans that have like like this this weekend, and they got us into Snoqualmie. And um, but you're playing the casino? No, we played a golf resort out there. Oh, nice. okay. A little while ago, it was really nice. But um, it's been really hard to break in. When those guys threaten to lock you in the bathroom, their bathrooms are so nice. It's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm sleeping here tonight. Is there a buffet in here? In here? There's a couch. <laughs> no, but it's been hard to break in. So we're hoping that, you know, over time people will see that we're wanting to come up here. And the yeah. other thing is hard to know where to go when you're, for me, I'm not from the area. I've only lived in Portland three and a half years. Yeah. So I have no idea what venues are what, and that's what's hard, too, is when you yeah. drive four and a half hours yeah. to find, oh, this wasn't really a good venue for yeah, us. Yeah, I know. That sucks. You I, know, I so. <laughs> how's, how's it going in Portland? Great. Yeah. And we're touring all over the place. One thing that we're doing this summer, which was fun, we've kind of been focusing on what do what kind of scene do we want, especially after that happened. We're, yeah. we're in bars, and we're trying to, like give music that's for the journeyer and somebody who's like on a life journey, thinking about who they are to the planet. And we're spending all this time in bars. And so not everybody's there yet. You know, when I was 24 hanging out in bars, I was on a journey. Yet. Yeah, yeah. You know right. what I mean? It took me until I was a little older and I had a couple more, you know, times it hit the wall or whatever. Right. So we're like, how do, you know, how do we connect with the journeyer? And then where would we want them to be? Would we want to ask our journeyers to come to some rowdy bar where you can't yeah. hear anybody? And so we're putting on a series of camping concerts this year. We just did one, and we're going to be at the Wildwood this weekend. And then August 2nd, we're going up to a place called the Barnstormer Brewery. She has a little brewery and a barn, and then she has this, like, homestead out there where we're going to have an outdoor show, and people can bring their tents. Oh, that will be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And barbecue. Next to Carson and, uh, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. Next to Carson oh, Hot that's wonderful. There. And- so, like, create the environment that we want around ourselves and for our fans that actually come out to shows. So we're excited about that. Our That's last awesome. one was pretty fun. We did it at the, a place called The Burke. Have you heard about that place? It's like the only place in Birkenfeld, Oregon. <laughs> but it's a music venue and they have people from all over the place come out there and, and you go stay the night out there and like hang out. Hmm. Yeah, oh, that sounds so great. That's been fun. And then we'll be in LA in next two weeks. Week. Next week. Next week we'll be in LA. Oh, that's exciting! To start making our record. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh, I'm excited for you guys. Yeah. All right, let's get another song here and then. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, what are you going to play next here? This one's called Wild Places, and I do write a lot of songs about Alaska because it's where I spent my life, but um, they were kind of my, like, Wild Places were my first friends, were like places instead of people. And when I go back there, I miss those places. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go to my mountain or my valley or whatever. Oh, so, neat. Yeah. So this is kind of a tribute to the wild places of Alaska. All right. Moody Little Sister here on the podcast. Ah, so great. Moody Little Sister. Moody Little Sister. You can see them live this evening, 7 p.m. at the uh, Bite of Seattle, uh, recording a new album. That's exciting. Yeah, exciting. And then uh, you expect to have that out uh, when then? I'm not sure. We're going to... I just wrote a bunch of checks <laughs> to head down there, but we're going to have to do a Kickstarter in order to finish it. So yeah. we'll get it. But then actually like putting it in a package and getting it to the planet is going to take a little work from people and friends and all right well yeah. if we can help with that let us know okay um best of luck enjoy yourself tonight at the bite of seattle thank you. yeah uh and uh and uh oh i wanted to just ask you a question and now i've uh I've did you want to try my kombucha is that what you're gonna do? that's what i want to try <laughs> uh, we should try the kombucha um do you mind sharing no, a little I, bit that's I, why i brought it well know. i know but you, you also let me see. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, oh yeah. <laughs> the champagne um, of kombucha. Here, let's get a. Let's get my. Good uh, lord. 
there we go. I know Michael won't have any. Cause Come on, you got to try. Yeah, I'm going to try hers. You'll try hers. Hers is going to be on. fresh and minty. Here we go. <laughs> Marty's is like urine with mold in it. Thank there, you. Hang on. Look how um, pretty it is. Oh, oh this my is God. <laughs> is it, does it have it a is nice beautiful. color? Yeah. It's beautiful. Put yours to shame, okay. Marty. Okay. Uh, here we go. A toast Cheers. to Moody Little Sister yeah. and their new record. Thank you. And uh, oh, it is pretty. It's so mm. much prettier than mine. That's delicious. That's Thank amazing. you. Okay, that tastes very much like mine. I mean, that's pretty close. I think that's, I think, On ice, it's amazing with the little mint leaf wow. in there. Mm. Really good. Yeah, the the mint smell, you know, mm. it covers up the the dirty sweat sock smell that uh, kombucha is usually traveling with. Thank you guys very much. Really, always Thank a you guys. joy Love to you guys. have you in. Uh, Naomi and uh, Rob Moody, little sister, here on the uh, Mighty Mighty Podcast. Uh, special thanks to Erin. It's her second week on the show. She hasn't quit yet. Oh nice. wow! Uh, but after today's program, I don't know. Um, <laughs> If her laundry isn't cleaner after today's show, she's got nothing out of uh, this program. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, we will look for your story, cover story, Seattle Weekly. Awesome. I'm sure it involves you naked on the cover again. Every story seems to. Funny. Doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> it's called... Uh, Fucking 50. Fing 50. Yep. We, don't, we, uh, this, we have different yeah. standards here the, than the Seattle Weekly about uh, using <laughs> profanity. Um, and then we'll see you again next Friday morning, 9.30, here from the Moldy Basement. Bye-bye. Holy Independence since 2009, this has been the Marty Reamer Show Podcast. For more information about topics discussed, visit our website, martyreamer.com. That's Marty, R-I-E-M-E-R, dot -E -E com. Thank you for subscribing to the podcast. Tell your friends. They look nice. Oh, and to subscribe to our podcast, that too. The Marty Reamer Show is a production of Twisted Scholar Incorporated. Remember, in America, a corporation is a person, too. I'm your superhero announcer, Blair Schultz. See you next time. Word out. <laughs>